ask for second chance romance, so you're going to get it. I'm gonna share with you guys 10 different second chance romance books. You guys love like these little videos where I wrap up different tropes, but I definitely need more like ideas. So comment below what like kind of tropes you guys are looking for. I think I've shared an enemies to lovers trope. Um, I've shared just lots of different like tropes that you guys know and love. So yeah, let me know if you guys enjoy this video. Comment below more like tropes that you want to see in different books. Um, I definitely want to share friends to lovers like video coming soon because that's like my favorite trope. So let's get into these book recs and I hope you guys enjoy. The first book that comes to mind when I think of this trope is A Thousand Boy Kisses by Tilly Cole. The second book in this little like series comes out in uh, the end of this year, early next year, something like that, but I'm really excited for it. This is about a couple, literally they are so cute, like absolutely perfect, so in love. He like climbs into her window and he's like always wanting to be around her. And then his dad ends up like moving for a job and so he moves with him and he's like, I, you know, still wanna do long distance. While he's gone, literally he's gone for like a couple weeks and like within those, that time frame she literally ghosts him like he doesn't hear from her or anything so i want to say he comes back two years later yeah two years later he comes back to the town because the dad's job moves him back and they knew that this would be like a short move so he knew that the move would only be like a year or two which is why he's like we can definitely do long distance and he's like why the heck did she not like respond to my texts my calls and just like completely ghost me like what happened and so you see them kind of like rekindle what they have, but also he's a totally different person. He's very guarded. She's also very guarded because she like obviously has secrets. This is such a good book. It will make you cry. And there actually is a playlist on Spotify that if you listen to the playlist while you read this book, it'll make it even more emotional. Ah, I love this book so much. It'll pull on your heartstrings and it will definitely make you cry. Second chance romance that I literally see no one talking about is Same Time Next Summer by Annabelle Mine again. I read this book 4.5 stars and I almost rated it five stars but it just didn't give me that five star feeling and I love this book like I love a reason to talk about it it is a book that is about Sam who her life seems like pretty much perfect she has a doctor for a fiance and she has like all these routines and like the perfect job and this is such a good book about how Sometimes our life can lead us to like a life that we don't necessarily want, but like the world looks at it as like perfect. And so we kind of don't want to like shake things up at all. Like maybe you're in a job you hate or in a relationship you hate or have friendships that you don't like. And this really like talks about that. And so her and her fiance are getting ready to get married. And she's like, you know what? This is gonna be great. I'm just gonna check another thing off the list. And she ends up going back to her hometown because her family is like, hey, you should get married in this hometown. Her family's kind of quirky. Like they have a lot of collectibles. Like they're just very like, you know, shoes off, just walk around in the grass and the water and like just very earthy. Whereas like Jack's family, her fiance is very like rigid and they're like rich and stuff. So they go to this town and she is there and she sees her old like love of her life. And you kind of figure out like why they stopped like their like relationship and everyone in the town remembers her with this other guy and so while she's there even her family like is still friends with the other guy while she's there you figure out like why they like broke up and it is so sad like literally so sad but you obviously want her to get the life that she wants but it seems like it's not possible because she's so like old already so if you guys love a second chance romance, this is a really good one. I never hear people talk about this one, so you should definitely read it. Love sharing diverse book recs, and this is one of them, Seven Days in June by Tia Williams. I love this book. Now, you definitely have to be ready to cry because this is gonna pull at your heartstrings. And it's a really good story about like trauma and overcoming trauma. It's about Eva who, she's like a mom, she is a writer, she, has definitely overcome a lot and you can even see in this book like her relationship with her mom is still kind of like tough but she's just like worked through a lot of things in her life and she is gonna go speak at this like big book conference and she finds out that this guy Shane is also supposed to be speaking at this book conference or I don't know if she finds out or just like sees him there at the conference and they used to like have a thing like just so like deep emotional like just oh, I can't even explain their connection and 
They, he's also a writer and they find out that they've actually been secretly writing about each other in their books. And while they're there, there's so much chemistry and so much tension. And this book is actually told over like a seven day period, but they also go like back and forth in like a, um, the timeline that's like past and present. So it is really, really, really good. And I feel like if you're wanting to read a book that is gonna make you cry, I feel like all these second chance romances are just like really emotional books, but um, this was a really good book to read and a great second chance romance. This book is a five star read for me. Like every single time I talk about this book, I actually get giddy because it makes me just so happy to think about. And I don't really think that there are many books that have even compared to this. And if I had to pick like my favorite romance and the one romance I would recommend to everyone, it would be this book. And it is Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren. Now this is the special edition cover from Stevie Lit Books, but you can, I don't know if you can still buy this or not, but I actually have uh, the original cover too, but one of my friends is actually reading it on vacation. She took it with her. So, this book is just everything. It's about Macy who, Macy has just been like living her life and seems to be like, you know, happy with the life that she has. And you kind of see her in present day and she ends up like connecting with Elliot. And Elliot is literally the love of her life who has like just, he'll infiltrate your heart and you'll be so in love with him by the end of the book. Like you, he's like the best book boyfriend. But you figure out like that they used to have a relationship, but like she's in a relationship with someone else now, like she's moved on. So you kind of really want to figure out like what happened to both of them. Like why did they like break up their connection? Like you just don't even know like how they got to that point. Because it's in dual point of view, you also see that like when they first started their connection, they're literally the best of friends. They would read together, they would just like, I don't know, make up little words together and they like would always hang around each other and they just like learned and grew together as people. It is like one of the like sweetest, coziest like romances and like I love it. But the second chance in this, you will literally be shook when you figure out like why they like broke things off and you will again cry. It's also a very easy read. Like the words are really, really big. Like you can see they're huge and there's tons of dialogue. So woo, you definitely should read this. If I can recommend any romance, like only one, this would be it because it is one of my favorite reads and it's five out of five stars for me. Um, I definitely am gonna read it again this year because I love it that much. So. Yeah, it's a great second chance romance. It's another great second chance romance and it's called Before We Were Strangers by Renee Carlino. The FMC and the MMC, the main male character and the female main, the male main character and the female main character. Um, they both met 15 years ago when they were in college. So this is like set in New York, they're in college. So it's definitely giving the fall vibes and they are both like really, I don't know, it's giving college. Like when you first fall in love in college and you like meet the love of your life, which is actually how I met my husband. Um, but something tears them apart and you see years later that like one of them is getting ready to get on the subway and they catch the other person's eye and they're already on the subway, but they like are already taking off. And the male main character, he's like, what the heck? Like, I have not seen her in years. I need to connect with her. And so you get to see like how they met in college and then like what tore them apart is like kind of a mystery. And then you see the future where he's like trying to find her and he's like sending out all these little like things online, like trying to figure out where she lives and like trying to connect with her because he has like literally no like connection with her at all and they're in New York City so she could be anywhere. So as you're reading the story of them, like when they were in college, you really like want them to like stay together, but you see obviously something tears them apart and it is such a good book. I will say that this book was definitely one that makes you think a little bit more than a lot of the other books that I've read. I think it makes you think about like life and it's very realistic, which I feel like sometimes uh, love stories aren't necessarily realistic love stories a very, very good second chance romance. This is the third book in a series and it's called The Final Offer by Lauren Asher. I think I've talked about this series a million and one times, but we're gonna do it again a million and two times just for good measure. This is actually the third book, but it is probably the thickest book, but it's also really good as well. It's about Cal and the 
This whole series is about three brothers who have been told by their grandfather that they can only inherit his inheritance if they do like these three things. And Cal, one of the things that he has to do is he has to sell like this, I think he has to sell this house that he, I don't know if he bought it a long time ago or lived in it or what, but he has to sell it. I'm pretty sure he like bought it a long time ago and he has to sell it but his ex-girlfriend lives in that house and he has not talked to her in years he literally like skipped town and like left and a word was never spoken from them ever again so he comes back to this town being like all right i'm ready to sell this house and she's like excuse me i live here and like second why are you here why are you talking to me and she's like so angry so he is really trying to like amend their relationship but also he's like working through his own things too because of the reason why he like just skipped out of town and left it's very very good and also there's tons of dialogue in this book it's thick but I, you will finish it really really fast it's like very dialogue heavy um you'll Lauren Ashley's books are just such an easy read and I breeze through this in literally a few days. I don't ever really hear anyone talk about this book but I think that people don't talk about it maybe because of the cover because like the cover is giving cringe like I don't even know how I picked up this book but it's called Untying the Knot by Megan Quinn. I really like this book. It is about Riot Bisley who is like the main male character and then the female main character I don't really know her name I'm trying to look. I read this like last year but I just absolutely loved it. Um, but they've been married for 11 years and pretty much like he is part of the Chicago Rebels and he is a baseball player like of the major leagues um, and whenever they first met like he was grumpy but he was like so into her and just like head over heels would do anything for her and then you see 11 years later she's like I want a divorce like so you don't really know what happened to get them to that point but the whole book is about you trying to figure out like why she wants a divorce because they seem so perfect in the beginning and he would literally do anything for her. But then you also see him trying to win her back because he's like, wait, hold on. Like you want a divorce? We've been together for so long. Like I don't understand. And he's trying to like figure out why she wants a divorce. And just within that, you see that she obviously still has a lot of like secrets that she hasn't like told him about but he also still has feelings for her and what he, they end up like living together because first she's like we're gonna live separately and then she's like you know what whatever we'll just like live together till you sign these divorce papers and she literally starts like making his life miserable in the house and it just the whole book is really good I read it really fast there's also a lot of spice in this so that keep that in mind but I feel like it's very rare for me to like books that have like a ton of spice, but I actually really enjoyed this because the storyline was so interesting. So yeah, I really like this book. This is a five out of five star read for me and I recommend it to people all the time and I've definitely recommend it to you guys as well, but I have to add this in this video for anyone who maybe is new and who hasn't heard me talk about this book a million times and it is Before I Let Go by Kennedy Ryan. I rated this book five out of five stars so so good it is about a couple Yasmin and Josiah and they've been divorced for a while they've been like co-parenting and kind of just like figuring out how to navigate life together but while they're co-parenting they kind of start to develop feelings for each other again and they're like should we try this again like even though we're literally divorced and I feel like it's very rare you read second chance romances where they like got married and they've been divorced like you might see people who were dating and like broke up or you might see people who have like you know the last book I was talking about where they're like thinking about getting divorced but this couple is literally divorced like they're they're divorced so it would be really hard for them to like restart again even though they like have kids but like you know that's like a hard thing because like you do you step into that and your kids will have to like go through you guys figuring things out but they're like magnets they keep getting drawn to each other and yeah then one of them starts dating so then it makes the other like a little bit jealous and it's just so freaking good but when you find out why they got divorced you're like gonna be very like it's one of those things where you'll read it and you'll be like okay i i could understand like you guys had some trauma like i get that and i feel like the thing in second chance romances that makes the book really enjoyable is if they like broke up or something happened and it's actually like understandable why they like left each other or like broke up first if it's something dumb you're like okay i don't like this book anymore but in this book you will like literally understand and it will ever the whole book will just like break you apart and put you back together so 
Definitely read this. I gave this to my friend to read and I think I shared that video with you guys where she literally was bawling when she read this book and she sent me a Snapchat of her actually crying as she was reading it because it was that good. It's just, please, just please read it. <laughs> Two of Us by Taylor Torres is a book that is really, really good. I rated this one four stars and she's actually a um, independent author. So like you won't see this in Barnes or anything, but I just, freaking love it. It's about Mara who she hasn't been home in like seven years and something took her away from her town and she didn't want to go back but a family emergency actually brings her back and when she gets back she sees that her next door neighbor is still living there and he was the love of her life and they had like a thing, a very very strong connection and then something pulled them apart. Oh my gosh, it is just so freaking good. It also talks a lot about grief and like working through family emergencies and also trying to like deal with your own things mentally while still navigating hard relationship things and just life in general. It's very, very good. I love her writing. This is her debut uh, her debut book and I can say nothing good but good things about it and I cannot wait to read something else that she comes out with. I will literally read anything that she writes. It just, her writing is really, really good. Last Second Chance Romance is one you've probably heard about and it is Happy Place by Emily Henry. This book reads a little bit more like fiction than romance so that's why I kind of wanted to save it for last because if you haven't read it, I think that don't go into it like expecting like the heavy, heavy romance because there's definitely a lot of other things too. I mean, the romance is heavy, like it definitely is, but it's like just in comparison to other things, there's so many other like, I don't know, plot lines that go on in this. Like it talks a lot about friendship and finding who you are and figuring out what you want to do in life. This is a great book, honestly, like if you're in your 20s and you're kind of in that stage of like figuring out life, but this book is about Harriet and Wynne and they always go on this friends trip with their like group of friends to a little cabin every year. Um, and it's like by the water or something and they are all, have always been together but this year they're actually broken up. So they decide to fake date while they are on this little trip because they don't want their friends to find out that they've been broken up because then it would be awkward while they're on this trip. Well, while they're there, they actually start to like have feelings for each other again and Oh my gosh, when I figured out like why they broke up, I wanted to throw the book against the wall because it just makes sense, but also it's like, that sucks, you know? So this was a really good book. Really enjoy Emily Henry's writing. I've read like three or four of her books now and they all are just like so good. And if you've never read anything from her, this is a good one to read. So that is all of the second chance romance recommendations that I have for you guys. If you guys want more book tropes or just different types of like, I don't know, recommendations, let me know in the comments and I will literally create those videos for you. This video was created because in the last video, you guys commented that you wanted to see second chance romance recommendations. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys tomorrow in the next one. Make sure you subscribe because there's a new video every single day and hope you guys have a great day. Bye guys.